Welcome to Tactical Analysis. In this episode, we're going to review our Sea Power episode labeled Hunting Soviet Subs. So I would recommend you watch that video first so you can see all the action and its full 3D glory. And then come on over here and uh, check out what we did right and what I did wrong. So in the beginning, we have three ships. We have the Tucker, which is a destroyer. We have a cruiser, the Stanley. And we have a OHP, Oliver Hazard Perry frigate uh, here in a, a wedge formation. And what we're going to do is uh, we're tasked with transiting from east where we are towards the west. And we know that we're going to come across some Charlie SSGNs. So we already know the classification of our targets. There could be additional targets, but we know there's going to be some subs in the way. And at least one of them is going to be a Charlie. Uh, these green targets, these are merchant ships that we have on our radar and their AIDS automatic identification system is turned on. So we know what they're doing, where they are. And there are, like I said, also on our radar overhead, we do have a Kiki delivery service uh, just flying overhead. This is a neutral Airbus. And uh, we're going to begin the scenario here transiting to the east and we're launching multiple sh2f asw helicopters that's what's going on right now there we go so those helicopters are in the air you can see them taking off from our little block wedge ships so we just got detection a few seconds ago as they were taking off of a submarine contact off to the west here so we're going to go ahead and select him on our target list. And we know that we have a detection range of seven nautical miles to our frigate. What we did was in order to um, conduct a good ASW search at the very beginning is we slowed down to five knots, one third bell. And uh, that gave our hull mounted sonar and our tow to ray sonar that's already deployed uh, enough uh, less self noise less flow noise over the array to give it a long enough detection range to detect this submarine who uh, we initially thought in the scenario was, was a, um, a CZ contact, which means convergent zone, which means 20 nautical miles away, maybe, maybe 10 nautical miles, depending on the environment. Uh, but with seven nautical miles, I'm pretty confident that this uh, target is above the layer and is, actually um, just making noise above the layer, maybe coming to launch depth, who knows? Because our hull mounted and towed arrays are not below the layer at this time. And now that we have a submerged threat uh, location known, we're gonna send out their SH-2s directly to employ a sonar buoy and a weapon against it. Our second uh, SH-2 is going to set up a fence. That is a line of sonar buoys between us and the submarine to track the submarine and any weapons that it might shoot. Well, any torpedoes that it might shoot. Obviously, if it shoots missiles, because it is a missile carrying submarine, according to our briefing, our radars from our ships will take care of that. If you notice, the fleet is also maneuvering towards the northeast. We're moving away from contact. This buys us time to uh, evade if necessary and doesn't unnecessarily threaten the the fleet by closing the target before it's formally localized, which means we have a good position on it and being attacked. We want it to be evading before we decide to close on it. So that's what's happening right now. And uh, we're going to watch the SH2 come in. Uh, this SH2, the one behind it, will um, reach the midpoint first and begin deploying its sonar buoys. We'll advance time a little bit to that point. And there it goes. So it just dropped one sonar buoy there, passive. And I dropped this one deep just to be sure that this submarine, if it does decide to evade deep, we have a, a sensor down there below the layer, which we think is around 400 feet to, to potentially track it. This SH2 is going in for the attack, but you'll notice I don't drop a weapon immediately on it. I'm going to come over here and drop a sonar buoy on it because we are going to lose contact here in just a second. All right, there's a sonar buoy up here, sonar buoy down here that's deep. And this SH2, we're going to move the camera to him. He is still tracking this because we have the tail on it. 
and you'll see that tail disappear here in just a second. Okay, you see how the, the tail is getting shorter and shorter? We have lost track of this submarine. So we believe that it's gone deep through the layer now. So he's going to drop a sonar buoy on it. He's dropping an active sonar buoy up here right now. So we don't have track of the submarine. This is its last known position. I decided to place an active sonar buoy up here to keep it from, if he decided to evade towards our fleet, assuming that he does have us acoustically, he would have to run towards our active sonar buoy. And again, I'm putting this one shallow because I have an active sonar buoy over here that's deep. So we have a passive, a passive, and an active in a triangle formation up here being laid by this helicopter, while this one is laying an active sonar buoy with this passive one trying to regain contact. That's deployed. All right, so I'm going to task him. I don't know for certain if he's evaded uh, north or south. So I guessed, and I guessed wrong here, that he evaded north. So I'm putting another sonar buoy field up here to the north until we regain contact. I'm hoping that, I thought that he would evade underneath you, the SS Botany Bay, because that would make sense. And we're putting another sonar buoy up here in case that's what he did. When we suddenly get another a, a reconnect, we regain the contact, uh, probably with our active sonar buoy is what it looks like. So I reverse course on our helicopter here, and we're going to go down and we're going to put a uh, sonar buoy right on this guy and a weapon. He's one nautical mile away. We're closing as fast as we can. It has been 10 minutes since initial detection at this point. Most of that time between then and now was transiting. So there's not much I can do to, to shrink that but you want to have as little time as possible between initial detection and weapon employment. Okay, we have good solid track now, so we're going to just go ahead and drop the weapon on him. We can see that he is transiting back to the north now. Helicopter comes to a hover. Uh, we just dropped a sonar buoy there. This is a passive sonar buoy that, that will track the weapon as much as it will the submarine. Okay, I've given the order to attack. The pilot is opening a uh, range where he'll have room to drop the weapon. The weapon needs time to get to its search depth and enable its sonar system. So this buys the weapon time. Weapons employed. There it is. It's a Mark 46 torpedo and it is beginning its initial initialization. It's turning on its own sensors and everything that takes a few seconds, but now it's enabled and uh, it's starting its active search and it's already changing depth down to target depth. This is an intercept course for it. Uh, our submarine K503 is alerted. He's beginning to evade. He's speeding up but it's already too late for him as the weapon merges on his bearing. An explosion is reported from the sonar operators on the helicopter and from the frigate. So K503 is stricken at this point. It's taking on water, slowing down and sinking at a rate of about 80 feet per second, 80 feet per minute, rather a little over one foot per second. This is a highly successful um, and rapid response to a threat that was only seven nautical miles away. Within about 13 minutes, the submarine went from initial detection to being sunk. This was a very good engagement. We have the second um, unit back here dropping a sonar uh, field, passive sonar buoy field. He's got three buoys by three buoys doing a little ladder search pattern. The purpose of this is that if there's any weapons launched, which we did expect, uh, we would see them coming. We'd have, you know, a good detection on them from this buoy field. And if for whatever reason our torpedoes missed, you know, we have two more torpedoes on this helicopter. 
Now, if you'll notice, the SH-2F does not go immediately back to the frigate because he has plenty of sonar buoys remaining and another weapon remaining. And we're looking for additional submarines at this point. There are none. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up now. But this was a good rapid response and successful engagement against an unknown submerged contact. Uh, total time from contact to um, attack was about 13 minutes and the target sunk about three minutes later. Pretty textbook uh, approach. All right. This has been an analysis of hunting Soviet subs. One of our episodes here in the sea power playlist. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Thanks for watching everybody.